Hi everyone. This week we're going to be covering lessons 21 through 24. So let's get started. This week you're going to need your lessons manual, the student worksheets, the math card games manual and the card the games for the cards and your AL abacus. So let's get started by turning to lesson 21. This week, your child is going to be working on their multiples of threes, sixes, and sevens, and they will also learn about the associative property. For lesson 21, the warm up will have your child work on their multiples of fives and nines. The nines are done through addition, which is kind of a sneaky way to practice and get familiar with their multiples of nine. This lesson is similar to previous lessons when we introduced a multiple. It will have your child work on the abacus, work on a worksheet, and see the pattern. So let's talk through the pattern of the multiples of three. So with the threes, you will see the ones place go down for each, uh, each number for each column. So you'll see three, two, one, zero, six, five, four, nine, eight, seven. But you will also see it going up overall if you start at the bottom. So it looks like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For the tens place, um, your tens place will actually go up by one in each column. So you zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, and zero, one, two. With patterns, um, actually when I taught my kids the patterns, um, I also wanted to express to them how cool math was. Um, they could see the wonder of how math works and kind of build an excitement and an interest. Um, I also wanted to see if my kids can discover some of the patterns on their own, um, which brought in a whole lot more interest and excitement with math. So this might be something that you might want to do as well. It's not expected that your child will have the multiples of three memorized by the end of this lesson. Your child will work on part of worksheet nine. You will also use this worksheet for the next lesson, so make sure you keep it handy. For this lesson, lesson 21, you're going to play the game multiples memory game. Now this is different from multiplication memory, which is what we've played previously. Uh, we do have a blog for multiple, multiples memory, and it is called 2017 Summer Game Number Seven, Multiples Memory. You're going to play this game with the multiples of three and another multiple of your choice. Maybe one that your child has a decent grasp on. Okay, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 22. In the warm up, your child is going to review their multiples of fives and threes using addition math facts. So it's a pretty cool way of doing uh, practicing multiples through addition. Um, also, in this lesson, your child is going to explore the multiples of six. And as in the previous lesson, your children, your child is going to work with their abacus, work on the worksheet, and then also see the pattern. So let me talk you through the patterns for six. So with the patterns of six, the first, the ones in the first row is the same as in the second. So we have six, two, eight, four, and zero. Also, you will see the tens place go up by three. So you'll have a zero, three, one, four, one, four, two, five, and three, six. Again, help your child to see the pattern and get excited about it and maybe discover these patterns on their own. Again, your child is not expected to have these math facts memorized at the end of lesson 22. You will be playing two games for this lesson. You will be playing the multiples memory game that you played in lesson 21, and you will want to use the multiple of six and another multiple of your choice. Your child will also play multiplication memory game using the multiples of six. Okay, let's turn to lesson 23. In this lesson, your child is going to learn their multiples of seven. Now the sevens were the hardest multiple for my children to learn. So we lingered on all of the lessons that really focused on sevens. Um, I would recommend you do that as well. You know, work these sevens a little harder than maybe than you worked on the fives, for example, um, making sure your child gets familiar with those multiples. Again, in the warm up um, section, your child is going to practice their multiples of six and three using addition. Also, like previous lessons, your child will be exploring the multiples of seven using the abacus, completing a worksheet, and looking at the patterns. Let's take a look real quick at the patterns of seven. 
Um, with the ones place, you will see again that it goes up, or actually in this case, it goes up. So you'll see seven, eight, nine, zero, kind of like 10, four, five, six, one, two, three. But if you look overall, it's kind of backwards from the threes, because if you start at the top on this far side, it will start at one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then zero. Uh, for the tens uh, place, you will see that it goes up by two everywhere except in the sevens. So you'll see zero, two, four, one, three, five, and two, four, six. You will also, um, in this lesson, play two card games. You will play the multiples memory game, uh, where you're going to use the multiple of seven and one other multiple of your choice. And you will also play the what's on top game that you've played in the past. Now, if you don't remember how, which game that is or how to play it, we have a blog for that one so you can look that one up. Okay, go ahead and turn to the last lesson of the week, lesson 24. In this lesson, you're going to be looking at the associative property for multiplication. This lesson's warm-up problems are actually on the worksheet. So this is a fabulous opportunity for you to layer in teaching. So while you're finishing up teaching another child, either um, in, a, in math or another topic or another subject, you can hand your level D student the worksheet and let them work through the first few problems independently without you. That way, when they're done with that part of the worksheet, you're done with teaching your other child. So it's a great way to layer in some of your teaching. All right, so showing the associative property on the abacus might be a little confusing. So let me walk you through it. Your child is going to learn the associative property for multiplication and explore how it works on the abacus. And if you look at the top of the first page of lesson 24, you will see the problem two times three times four. Now we're going to take a look at that first portion of the problem two times three, and we're going to put that portion of the problem up on this top wire. So two times three is basically two taken three times. So that's what we're going to do. Two, two, and two. Two taken three times. But now we have to take this amount and multiply that by four. So we're going to do, show that by putting it on four different lines. So two, and then another set, and then another set. So we have two times three taken four times. Now if we squish all of these beads together, we can see that two times three times four totals a 10, 20, four. Two times three times four equals 24. So you may be asking the question, what is really the difference then between associative property of multiplication that was introduced in this lesson and the commutative property um, that was introduced last week? Well, the commutative property of multiplication uses only two digits, whereas the associative property of multiplication works for three digits or more and many times includes grouping. You can take a look at the explanations at the top of the second page of lesson 24. It says this, Although this associative property looks very similar to the commutative property taught in lesson 18, the commutative property is limited to two elements. Since three elements are being used in this lesson, this is the associative property. Additionally, the associative, the associative property is concerned with grouping. Sometimes parentheses are used with the associative property, although they are not necessary. Uh, lesson 24 will also have the student work through a worksheet, um, worksheet number 10. And you will notice that this worksheet is more like a puzzle and will require some extra thinking on your child's part. Um, if your child really struggles with this worksheet, you can give them some hints. Um, this worksheet is actually working on factoring. So the first thing that you want to do is let them know that any number that is even one of the factors is going to be a multiple, or is, is two. So two is going to be one of those factors. So that might help your child kind of start narrowing it down. Um, you may also find it helpful for your child to use the multiplication envelopes um, to help find those factors. Um, we recently, actually, I got an email a couple, a week or two ago that had a student by the name of Judah 
find another solution to the number 72. He came up with the mul multiplying nine times two times four to get to 72. So maybe you can challenge your child to try to come up with other factor combinations that are not listed um, in the solutions in the lesson manual. Now, if you don't remember or your child doesn't remember what factors are, factors were discussed in lesson 18. So this might be a really good time to talk about what factors are with your child and you can even maybe have them open up the math dictionary and have them look it up again. The math card game for lesson 24, you actually have a choice, to be honest. Um, you have the game, you can either choose the game what's on top or you can choose a more advanced um, version of that game, which is what's on top now. Um, basically, the advanced version has you mixing up the product cards so that they're not in order. You're going to want to play this game with eight as the multiplier. Now, for your fifth day of the week, make sure you play plenty of math card games this week, solidifying some more of those multiplication math facts. Your child should be on their way to having some of those math facts memorized. Multiplication is hard, so the more you do now, the less you're going to have to do later. So making sure your child gets those, some of those multiplication math facts down now will be a great benefit to you. All right, well, that's it for this week. If you have any questions or concerns as you work through the lessons, please email and call us for help. We are here to help you. Have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you next week when we talk about lessons 25 through 28. Bye, everybody.